Hi, third grade families and students. Here is our foundations unit one week one packets. The suggested pace is to complete one homework page per evening. But as long as the packet is completed in its entirety by the due date here set by your child's teacher, you'll be good to go. Also, please with any additional time or in the car or in the line at the grocery store, practice the following trick words. Students should not only be able to read them, but they should be able to write them as well and spell them. Trick words are words in the English language that do not follow any rules of the language, so you just have to memorize them. Again, from, put, was, friend, month, want, and when are great words to be practicing throughout the week. Here's our unit one letter. Unit one is two weeks long, and then this, your child will take the unit one assessment. So here's what you need to know to help you through these next two weeks of packets. Dear family, the first several units in Foundations Level 3 will review concepts previously taught while adding new information. This is a key component of the program. We will build on the skills already in place so that we can progress further into the study of word structure by focusing on advanced spelling rules and morphology, which are patterns of word formation. In Unit 1, we will review closed syllables. A closed syllable is a word or part of a word that has one vowel closed in or followed by one or more consonants. The vowel does not need to have a consonant before it, but it must have at least one consonant after it. Examples include the word cup, whip, last, and at. A closed syllable makes the vowel short, as in a ah in apple, e eh in ed, i in itch, a uh in octopus, and a uh in up. The vowel is marked by using the breathe sign. Closed syllable words are marked this way. You simply scoop the syllable, mark the vowel as short with the breathe, and put a C for closed. The five closed syllable exceptions will also be revisited. Closed syllable exceptions have a similar pattern to closed syllables, but they have a long vowel sound instead of the expected short vowel sound. It is helpful to stress the meaning of the word exception to your child, something that does not follow the rules. The closed syllable exceptions are ILD, as in child, so that's ILD, IND, as in kind, OST as in post, OLD as in cold, and OLT as in cult. Closed syllable exception words are marked this way. Notice the vowel does not have a breathe because the vowel is long. Instead, above it, you put a macron and you scoop the syllable and it's a closed syllable exception with an X over the C. In addition to review, the students will learn some new sounds. They will learn TCH catch ch, and to choose TCH rather than CH after a short vowel. And we'll mark the new sound by underlining it like that. TCH gets one underline. And last but not least, I will teach students that W and QU change the sound of the letter A, as in wash and squash. As we review these concepts and learn new ones, I will continue to encourage students to use their sound tapping strategy to help segment and blend sounds and words for both reading and spelling. Throughout level three, your child will study homophones or words that sound alike but are not spelled the same and have different meanings. For example, no and no, and right and right, 
you will see that several activities will provide practice with the meaning and spelling of these words. Please work with your child to reinforce the above concepts by using the enclosed activity suggestions. If you have any questions, please write them down and I will get back to you. I truly appreciate your partnership. You will find that working with your child is very rewarding and your child will treasure your involvement. We are off. The first page in the packet says, read the words, underline blends with two or three separate lines, underline digraphs or trigraphs with one line. Some words have digraph blends, like the word crunch. Okay, so the first word here is slash. You can tap it by slash and then blend it, slash. And your child should be able to know that SL, two consonants together, they make their own sounds. So that's a two letter consonant blend. Whereas sh makes one sound, that's a digraph. So we underline it with one underline. How about this word? St a uh, m p what word stump and you have a consonant blend at the beginning s t and you have a consonant blend at the end m p m p they each get separate next one k r a s t again blend at the beginning and you want to separate those lines and blend at the end s t and I'm not doing good at separating with, with this pen, but you get the idea. Try this one. L -a -ch. Notice after this short a, ah, we use the trigraph, T-C-H, that new sound we learned. St, a, k, s, t, blend at the beginning. And look, after a short vowel, last year you learned that C-K, the digraph, comes after a short vowel. Scratch, what word? Scratch, right, look at this one, it has a three letter blend. They each get separate underlines when you mark them. <laughs> this is harder than it looks. And then TCH after that short A ah sound. TCH catch ch gets one underline. Ch, ah, mm, p. We got a digraph ch to start us off and a blend at the end, yes? Okay, k -l -a -k. what word? Clock, blend at the beginning, C-L, and a digraph, C-K, after that, short vowel, you got it. R-A-N-C, ranch. Now look at this one. We actually, just like in crunch, this is called a digraph blend. So it's when a consonant, like N, is right up against a digraph. Ch, that's a digraph blend. How about this one? P, itch. Yep, after that short I, we have TCH, one underline for that trigraph. Ch, ah, m, p, digraph. And then we have m, p, blend at the end. B, e, n, ch. What do we have? Yes, this is another digraph blend like we had up in ranch. So mark the digraph blend like that. Excellent. Now let's go to the next page. Okay, on this page, they want us to read the words. And it says, be a detective and find the closed syllables and mark up the words. Well, we did a one for you. We marked it up and marked it as a closed syllable. Remember from the letter, a closed syllable, the rule, the rule is it must only have one vowel. After the vowel has to come at least one syllable to close it in and make that vowel what? Short or long? Short, right. So you will notice that sky is crossed off because it is not a closed syllable. If you look here, lime, first of all, that I is saying its name, and it has two vowels. So this one is actually a vowel consonant E syllable that we are going to cross off that is not closed. I think that looks closed. Ooh, 
this one here, not one vowel, not short. So score is not going to be a closed syllable. Look at this one here. See the two vowels together? That's a double vowel, a D syllable. We'll get to that. Not a closed syllable. And here's another one, AI. Two vowels together, not a closed syllable. But I have to say, this one is tricky right here. You're going to maybe think, you know, this is not a closed syllable because there are two vowels. But I have to tell you something and remind you something. In the English language, there is a rule that no word could ever end with V. So this E is silent as I cross it off. And this O is still technically short. So the word solve is still closed. It actually is. I'm not making that up. And that's because the E that's there is only there because a word cannot end with an E in the English language. And we know you learned in second grade that if it's a silent E, you can cross it off. Okay, so let's go back up to this word. The word is brunch. What word? Brunch, right? So let's start marking. We have a BR blend, and look what we have at the end a digraph blended with that N. Is the vowel short? Uh, yes, because it's closed in by these consonants, by that digraph blend at the end. So we're going to label that closed. Okay, how about this word? Shock. Go. Shock. Yes, we have a digraph here and another digraph here. And the vowel is short, so we're putting a breve. And the syllable is what type again? That's a closed syllable, correct. Crunch. What word? crunch right so we have the cr blend they get separate underlines at the beginning we have a digraph blend again at the end do we have a short uh yep because it's closed in by that digraph blend and so therefore that is a closed syllable come on down to this row latch what word latch i see this trigraph at the end because it follows a short vowel and that also is closed. How about over here? Switch. What word? Switch. We have SW consonant blend. We have a TCH trigraph after the short I. And it is also a closed syllable. Excellent. How about this word? Drift. What word? Drift. I have D -er blend. Ft blend all these separate underlines and i do have a short i vowel in there it is a closed syllable okay two more thick say it thick digraph digraph short vowel what kind of syllable it's closed correct P inch what word pinch and i have a digraph blend hopefully you see at the end with that short I that is closed in. Another closed syllable. Excellent work. Okay, the next page in your packet says, have your child read the sentence and select the correct word from the box to complete it. Write the word on the line and reread the completed sentence. Mark the word you selected as a closed syllable. Use each word in the box only once. Well, let's look at these words in the box. Repeat after me. Trust. Plant. Slept. Looks like slept was already used. Twist. Swept. Very good. Okay, so Fran slept in the tent, but Stan did not. Notice how they wrote the word on the line and then they marked it up. Can you help me blank the lid off? Which word makes sense there? Right, twist. So we're going to spell it. T. This is going to be super hard for me. Be patient. <laughs> W-I-S-T. And when you mark it up, 
Notice in the first one, they weren't really marking the blends, were they? Because they didn't mark SL or PT, but they did mark it to close syllable because the vowel is short, so put your brief, and it's closed in by syllables after it, or I'm sorry, closed in by consonants after it, so that's why it's a closed syllable. Try number three. Mom, blank up the mess. Mom swept, right? So again, you're going to write swept, and you're going to mark it as a closed syllable. Okay. And remember, it's a closed syllable because this vowel is short, because after it, there's only one vowel, and after it, it's closed in by that blend. So scoop it and mark it closed. Number four, the kids did not blank the big dog. Hmm, they did not trust. So you can put in the word trust and mark that up as we've been done the rest. Five, we can help mom blank the grass seeds. Does the last word here make sense? Plant? Sure. So you're going to put plant and mark it as a closed syllable with that short vowel. Okay, down at the bottom, do the guess, CH or TCH activity. Have your child add CH or TCH to the blank spaces below and read the words. Well, this is going to be sw itch, I. Is that a short vowel? Yeah, so right after a short vowel, we've been learning which one of these do we use. Right, it's going to be TCH after, right after a short vowel. Now, if you go down to number two, bunch. Is N a short vowel? No. So you're going to use your digraph, C-H. P-A-T-C-H. Is A a short vowel? So which one? Trigraph, T-C-H, three. Very good. How about four? P-U-N-C-H. Is N a short vowel? No. So digraph, C-H. How about five? Stitch. Stitch. Is I a short vowel? So which one? TCH, very good. Number six is interesting because it's starting with it. Do we ever start a word with TCH? No, it comes at the end. So to make the word chest, we just need the digraph CH. Okay, same with number seven. We don't start a word with TCH. So this one is ch op with the CH. And last but not least, number eight, scr, S-C-R blend, scratch, is a a short vowel? Yes, so we're using the trigraph T-C-H. Excellent work. Okay, for this one, we're just going to, um, I'm not going to write the words because that takes me a very long time on the computer, but we can talk about them. It says, read the sentence. Select the correct word from the box to complete the sentence. Write the word on the line. And then a lot of students and families miss this part. Reread the completed sentence and scoop into phrases. Use each word in the box only once. Well, let's look at these words, please. Repeat. Stretch. Ditch. Latch. Link. Pitch gust, scratch, and crunch. Good. That was a big blank of wind. What word do you think makes sense in that sentence? That was a big gust of wind. Right. So you're going to go ahead and write gust. You do not need to mark it, but they do want you to scoop that sentence into phrases. And remember for this part, there could obviously be more than one choice, but as I read it, that was a big, that was a big, I kind of like those together, and then gust of wind. So I'd scoop it like that. All right, number two. Where do you want to blank this tent? Hmm, where do you want to Pitch a tent is actually the best choice here. You pitch a tent, it means you put it up. So I would put pitch right there. Where do you want to pitch this tent? 
is how I would read that sentence. Good. Number three, blank the strap to the pack. If you want to connect the strap to the pack, what's another way to say that? Link, right, link the strap. Okay, so um, when I reread it, link the strap to the pack, I think I like it like that. Link the strap to the pack. Good. Number four, did Tim get a big blank on his leg? Stretch, ditch, latch, or scratch, or crunch? Right, scratch. Did he get a big scratch on his leg? Did Tim get a big scratch on his leg? I kind of like it like that. All right, let's move on to number five. Lift the blank to get into the shack. Lift the stretch, no. Lift the ditch, lift the latch, lift the crunch. The latch is another word for lock, right? So lift the latch to get into the shack. Excellent. And the next one, number six. The dog will fetch the ball from the, the ball might be in the ditch, right? Okay, so let's see. The dog will fetch the ball, or we could do the dog will fetch the ball from the ditch. I like that. I think yellow is going to be hard to see, but we can do it. They plan to blank before they run. They plan to stretch or crunch. Yeah, you should always stretch your muscles before running. They plan to stretch. I like that together before they run. Excellent. And last but not least, we'll go back to blue. I like to blank my chips at lunch. What word? Crunch, right? So you're gonna write it in the line and then we'll scoop it. I like to crunch my chips. I kind of like that all together. And then at lunch. Excellent. Okay, for this one, it says read the sentences. Write the correct sound alike word from the box on the lines below. Read the sentence again, scooping it into phrases. Okay, so what I'm going to do is this. I am going to, if the sentence uses the word K-N-O-W, I'm going to scoop it with red. If the sentence uses N-O, no, we'll use orange. If the sentence is using W-R-I-T-E, we'll scoop it in green for right. And if it's using R-I-G-H-T, we'll scoop it in blue to show that they used that right. Okay. Now, remember, K-N-O-W, no, is you understand something. Um, N-O is the opposite of yes. W-R-I-T-E is pen and paper on, yeah, pen, writing with pen and paper. And R-I-G-H-T is correct or the opposite of left, like the direction. Okay. I did not, hmm, that fact. You could say you did not write it down, but I think like I'm thinking of eight times nine, my least favorite. I did not know. Yeah, I had to practice that a long time. I did not know, K-N-O-W, that fact. So go ahead and write that in there and then let's scoop. I did not know that fact. Excellent. Number two, I was blank about the text. I was know about the text. I was right about the text. Yeah, so which right was it? I was correct about it. Right, so I would pick R-I-G-H-T for number two. I was right about the text. Number three, did you blank your answer on the quiz? Again, this one you could be thinking, did you write your answer on the quiz? I think it's better though to pick, did you know your answer on the quiz? Did you know it? So I would pick, if it were me doing this, K-N-O-W. Did you know your answer on the quiz? All right, number four, mom told us there would be blank dog. 
Well, no dog or right dog? Mom told us there would be no dog. So I'm thinking she meant N-O. There would be no dog there. Mom told us there would be no dog, N-O. Number five, there is blank lunch in my bag. There is right lunch in my bag. That doesn't sound good. There is no lunch in my bag. I like this. It's missing. No lunch there. N-O. There is no lunch in my bag. Number six. I blank. I left my hat in here. I know I left my hat in here. This no. I know it. I just know it. I know I left my hat in here. Number seven, that box has no gift in it. Right gift in it doesn't make sense. No gift means it's not there. So that box, use N-O, that box has no gift in it. Mm. Or that box has no gift in it. You could do two scoops too. Can you write down what I say? Which writes? If you're using pen and paper, yeah, green, W-R-I-T-E. Can you write down, kind of like that together, what I say? Number nine, at the end of the path, walk to the, no, walk to the right. You're talking about a direction. Go towards, go to the right. So you need R-I-G-H-T for number nine. At the end of the path, walk to the right. And last but not least, there is no milk to drink with my snack. Uh, so it's not there. We need the orange, N-O. There is no milk to drink with my snack. And remember, those scoops, there could be different options. But when you go back and reread the sentences, it should sound natural. Okay, well, that's all for Unit 1, Week 1. Thanks for joining.